This video is going to cover my CD collection for Steely Dan. I'm going to show each of the CDs that I have, talk a little bit about the albums as you know, and then provide a little bit of historical context as well. Now Steely Dan started out in the 70s, the early 70s, as a true band. I believe they were a five or six piece group. And by the middle to late 70s, they had just dwindled down to the songwriting team of Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. This first CD that I have, it's actually uh, been repackaged many different times. This particular version is called The Masters, and the label itself is called Eagle Records, or Eagle Masters. Um, it's just a real budget line, you know, CD release. There's about 20 demos on here. Some of these songs did eventually get developed into Steely Dan songs, like Parker's Band, Any World, uh, Brooklyn Owes the Charmer Under Me, Berry Town. Some of them never did. It's interesting just from a historical perspective. These are really not much more than demos, kind of crude recordings, not the best sound quality, but just interested, interesting to hear how their songwriting developed over the years. This is what the CD itself looks like. And that is the back of the CD case. This is the first um, Steely Dan album proper. This, of course, is Can't Buy a Thrill. I know that band themselves were not happy with the cover. I think this cover was created by the art department for the record company. I know the band was not happy with it, but they were stuck with it nonetheless. But this was Steely Dan's first um, number one album. Uh, the songs Do It Again went straight to number one. Reeling in the Years was a number one smash hit. And then um, Dirty Work was the third number one hit off this album. And this really started off Steely Dan mania, um, especially here in the States. Um, you know, right away, the band started uh, selling out their stadiums. Uh, there was just, Steely Dan was all over the radio at this time. And it kind of took the band by surprise. Um, but it really did launch a wave of... Uh, popularity that didn't wane throughout the end of the 70s. This happens to be the remastered version. And the booklet itself, it's got some song lyrics, reproductions of the artwork that was in the original album, and then there's always kind of a cheeky write-up about the album itself. This one is called A Farewell to Flatbush, and these are, um, these particular notes, and the printing's too small, I can't see who wrote it, um, but it's just kind of a historical context about the making of the album uh, and whatnot, and what a smash hit this was for Steely Dan. It really launched their popularity, I mean, they became household names. Uh, and really, it also launched a wave of merchandising. There were Steely Dan bubblegum cards, Steely Dan lunchboxes, Steely Dan plush dolls. Uh, I mean, you name it. It was just everywhere, uh, just kind of a wave of uh, Steely Dan. So it really, uh, you know, expectations were very high for the second, the follow-up Steely Dan album. Another thing is that... Uh, Unlike the rest of Steely Dan's catalog, uh, Donald Fagan doesn't sing all the songs. They had an actual second lead singer, David Palmer was his name. He is the one who sings on the song Dirty Work. Donald Fagan wasn't exactly uh, the most competent in his vocal style, and he always intended for there to be another lead singer. I, I don't think he relished vocal duties, at, at least initially, and so that's why they had a second lead singer on there. David Palmer, I think, sings on maybe two or three tracks on that first album, and then eventually they decided that Donald Fagan was going to be the voice of Steely Dan, and by the second album, he was gone. Speaking of that second album, 
Um, this is Countdown to Ecstasy. And of course, this had the number one hits, uh, Boston Rag on it and My Old School. So it continued that string of uh, not only number one albums, but also number one singles for Steely Dan. By this point, their popularity was such that they weren't able to leave their hotel rooms on tours. Um, the girls at their concerts were just screaming really loud and the band weren't able to hear themselves in concert over the screaming of all their female fans. And so fame was starting to kind of take its toll on the band at this point. Um, but you've got classic songs like the opener of Bodhisattva, uh, Razor Boy is a great song. Obviously, the the smash singles, Boston, or, um, Boston Rag and My Old School. Kind of a countryish Pearl of the Quarter, which is an unusual in the Steely Dan catalog. And then the great, almost futuristic uh, King of the World. This particular... Um, booklet includes again another essay this was the artwork that was part of the original album sleeve and then you've also got song lyrics here so another another solid album and it proved that uh, Steely Dan weren't going to be you know one album or one hit wonders their third album is actually the soundtrack to Steely Dan's first feature film, Pretzel Logic. If you've seen the film, it's essentially, for the most part, a day in the life of Steely Dan, although they do wrap a plot around it. This is a still from the film. The film was shot in black and white, and essentially it's a story of this pretzel vendor that Steely Dan meets while they're on tour, and he discloses that he's in danger of losing his pretzel vendor business because he owes some money to the mob and so Steely Dan tries to help get him out of trouble with the mob and um, help save his business in the meantime while they're on tour and performing songs. So the first um, five or six songs are songs from the movie, and then the rest of them are just other tracks that they threw on here. So you've got Ricky Don't Lose That Number, which was another number one smash for them. Um, you've got uh, Any Major Dude Will Tell You, which was another uh, number one track from this album, also on the soundtrack to the film. Uh, my favorites happen to be, I really like Monkey in Your Soul. It's kind of a uh, funky rocker. Uh, I, you know, again, it's not a not the longest track, but I really like it a lot. Um, I think uh, St. Louis Tootaloo, which is a cover of a Duke Ellington track, uh, is kind of a interesting track. In the movie, it's where Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, you know, are kind of romping around in that uh, that open field, and they're just kind of clowning around for the cameras. Um, the uh, track Charlie Freak is pretty cool. The song Pretzel Logic uh, itself, I think, is a, a real cool track. It's like a time travel uh, sort of. Um, lyric there but I really for the most part um, you know I really enjoy this album I think it's solid all the way through obviously it's a multi-platinum seller so a lot of other fans uh, and the public in general thought so as well so this happens to be again another remaster And like all the other remasters, right up on the album. And then these all fold out. They're not really booklets, but um, you know, you've got the song lyrics here. And then their fourth album, and the first one to feature backup vocals by uh, Michael McDonald. And one of my favorite Steely Dan covers, I think this is a Katie did on here, but I don't know, I've just always, this is the first Steely Dan album that I ever owned. This is a remastered CD.
And this has the great opening track, Black Friday. Uh, it had the number one song, Daddy, Don't Live in That New York City No More. And also um, the smash hit, Chain Lightning. And I believe this was the point where Steely Dan um, decided that they were not going to go on tour anymore. Um, just with, uh, you know, being mobbed everywhere they went, they couldn't leave their hotel room. Um, you know, they couldn't hear themselves over the screams of the girls uh, at every single concert. And so I believe it was around this time that the decision was made, you know, this isn't any fun. We really need to concentrate more on our studio work. Um, you know, we can still record videos for the fans, but... Um, you know, I believe a lot of the teen magazines at the time, um, Steely Dan were giving interviews to saying, you know, look girls, this is going to be maybe uh, the last tour that we're going to do. And they really kind of um, sort of isolated themselves in the studio and decided that like the Beatles, they were going to be a studio band rather than a touring band. And that's when you start seeing less of Steely Dan as an actual band and more of Donald Fagan and Walter Becker in the studio just using studio musicians rather than having an actual uh, functioning Steely Dan band. The Royal Scam is their fifth album. And this had Kid Charlemagne on it, which obviously was a, a number one hit in many countries. Uh, the Caves of Altamira, Don't Take Me Alive, Sign and Stranger. Um, the Fez was a huge disco hit. Um, I know it was all over the radio and kind of spawned the whole uh, you know, disco scene in the late 70s, which obviously um, the Bee Gees heard that song and... I mean, the rest is kind of history there. Um, Green Earrings is a great track. Haitian Divorce, um, Everything You Did. And The Royal Scam is kind of a dark rocker. I really enjoy that one. Um, just kind of got an ominous tone to it. And I believe this artwork for this cover was actually commissioned. It might have even been for Van Morrison or something. I, I don't know if I read that wrong, but... Um, Steely Dan actually uh, kind of co-opted it and used it for this album cover. It's actually, this was just an original picture of a vagrant who was sleeping on a, um, you know, a, a bench. And then they had an artist which did the kind of the buildings with uh, the mongoose and the, the snake and all that kind of, you know, airbrushed around it but you know a cool cover not my favorite uh i like the color tones on it but um that's what the cd itself looks like and again not a booklet this just kind of folds out there's an essay on the album and just kind of the historical context um you know this is where um you know, Stevie, Steely Dan had a, um, a two-film contract um, with Universal Pictures, and they were trying to decide on a movie script. What was their second movie going to be? Um, there was some talk that The Royal Scam was going to be developed into their second feature film, but they couldn't agree on a script that either Donald Fagan or Walter Becker uh, could agree on. Um, there was talk at one time of doing just a cartoon Steely Dan movie, um, but again, they weren't able to settle on an animator. Um, there were some rough mock-ups um, that were done up, but Steely Dan was just not satisfied that the finished product was going to uh, represent them well. And so, unfortunately, uh, we never saw a second Steely Dan movie, although the closest we came was um, an animated uh, Steely Dan film based on the Royal Scam concept. Then maybe Steely Dan's biggest album was Asia. This was number one in 42 countries. Uh, you had the number one hits, Black Cow, Asia, Peg, and Josie. 
And I believe Steely Dan had the top three hits on the charts. Um, number one, number two, and number three. I forget for how many consecutive weeks. Um, but that just goes to show how uh, fantastic this album was. Really love the Stark artwork on this one. And this has the original liner notes from the album as well as the artwork that was included in the gatefold and also the lyrics. And I believe this is around this time that Marvel, Mar Marvel Comics had commissioned the, um, the popular Steely Dan comic book where uh, Donald Becker, Donald Becker <laughs> Donald Fagan and Walter Becker were the um, superheroes. Um, I think that I think there were around 80 issues of the Steely Dan comic book. Um, but that was just kind of speaks to their popularity at, and cultural significance also at this time as well. And then kind of the end of the road, uh, Gaucho, at least for the 70s, Gaucho was their final album. And this had the number one hits Babylon Sisters and Hey 19. Time Out of Mind uh, was also a, almost made number one, but that of course features Martin Opfler on guitar. I don't know if any other songs feature Martin Opfler on here, but in addition to being the uh, leader of Dire Straits, he also uh, was a session musician for hire almost at this time. I know he played on Bob Dylan's uh, Slow Train Coming album around this time also. And this was just kind of the album where, you know, Donald Fagan wanted to do his own thing. They were kind of tired of the fame, tired of constantly being in the spotlight and decided that it was time to call it a day and they wanted to go out on top. Got the lyrics here. Got some essays. And of course, um, you know, Steely Dan did do their final concert. Um, to promote this album and then they ceremoniously went their separate ways and called it a day uh, for a while. This is Steely Dan Gold which is more or less a greatest hits album. You got Hey 19 on here, Deacon Blues, FM um, which was a single um, that was from the soundtrack of a film, FM. Um, but it was never released on a Steely Dan album proper. Uh, Black Cows on here, Babylon Sisters. And then there's a couple, uh, there's a couple Donald Fagan solo tracks on here, Century's End and True Companion. And then there's a hilarious live version of Bodhisattva with, uh, I don't know who he was, but he was the guy who was introducing the band uh, it's just a hilarious intro before the actual live track. If you haven't heard it, um, definitely uh, check it out. It's really funny. So not there's just liner notes here, no uh, lyrics or anything like that. And then this was the first true, Steely Dan got back together in the early 90s and started doing a series of tours. This is a CD compilation that was recorded at various dates on that tour. And you've got uh, Babylon Sisters, Green Earrings, Bodhisattva, and interestingly, there is a um, Walter Becker solo track that we do on here called Book of Liars from, I believe it was 12 Tracks of Whack was the title of Walter Becker's solo album that that comes from. 
And then much to everyone's surprise and also everyone's great joy, Steely Dan reunited for their first studio album in many, many years, Two Against Nature. This is really a fantastic album. And I think the song most people would recognize off of here is, uh, I believe it was also the single, uh, Cousin Dupree. And the second reunited Steely Dan solo album, although not nearly as great as the first, Everything Must Go. Not crazy about that artwork, I'm not sure. I think they could have done better, but it is what it is. And unfortunately, obviously, there won't be any more uh, Steely Dan studio albums with the unfortunate passing of Walter Becker. But that is my Steely Dan album collection. I know it's by no means extensive, but nonetheless, I hope I've provided some valuable historical context and information about Steely Dan. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking like, and I appreciate your comments.